Okay, we're going to do something slightly different today. January is the first month of 2023, which is a time for generative artists to do lots of daily projects. You don't have to do it every day, but each day there's a prompt. So today's is made in 10 minutes, and we're going to make a generative art project right now in 10 minutes. Now, because 10 minutes isn't very long, there's a couple of things I'll skim over. But the first thing I'm doing here is um, I'm copying over my sort of boilerplate that I always start off with, and I'll show you that now. So much like P5.js, there's a setup stage, so I've got make features here, and then there's an init and a, a layout canvas. So that's like the P5.js setup, and I've got a draw canvas here. So if I just fill in with a red background. So I'm also using GitHub's Copilot, which is an AI code thing that's been trained on lots of code, but also on my own personal style. So you see this um, suggestion here, and I'm just pressing tab to autocomplete. I don't think we'll do this in 10 minutes without the assistance of this. So if I go back to this page, reload, made in 10 minutes, I should now have a red square. I'm actually going to open that up so we can see what's going on. And as you can see, every time I resize this, it changes for me. So that's good. What we're going to try to do in this project, or what I want to do, is I want to have a square where I have hundreds of lines at the top, starting above, that then rotate their way down this square, leaving a pattern. And then once they all get below, if we have time, we'll make them go to the top and restart again. Now, for this, I'm using a coordinate system of 0, 0 to 1, 1. So if something is in the middle, it will be 0 0.5. If it was 0 0.25, it's quarter the way along. So that means if the canvas is 8,000 pixels, 4,000 pixels, 333 pixels, it doesn't matter. 0 0.5 is always in the middle. So what we need to do is have a whole bunch of lines in an array from 0 to 1. Let's do that now. And we're going to do that at the top, and we'll see some auto-completing. So we need an empty array for the lines. Okay, features dot lines equals, there we go. Uh, we want between 100 and 700 lines. Okay, no, that's not how FX rand works. FX rand gives you a number between zero and one. So we need to multiply by 600 at 100. Now make the lines with a random x speed size and size and color. Let's do that. So we're going to loop through them. Okay, we'll take that. So fx round zero to one speed. We want it to be slow, but I don't want it to be zero. Otherwise, it will just spin around. So we have to do that size slightly bigger. Again, we want non-zero color. It's completely messed up that. So HSL. That should do it. And we also want y, which is starting at minus 0.2. So if we refresh this page, we should see we have an array of lines, and then they all have uh, positions and color in it. Let's draw the lines. So if we go down to the draw part, okay, we'll get rid of this. First thing we want to do is set the line width. Uh, set line width. And I want that to be a function of the actual canvas size. And we also want we want a finished flag so we know when all the lines have reached the bottom. Please excuse the spelling. So let finished. Okay. Now loop through all the lines. We're going to do that. We're going to grab a line. Uh, it wants to do this, but we're not going to do that. We're actually going to say uh, set the line color. Set the line color. All right. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do that either yet. We're going to save the can yeah, canvas state. I'll explain this in a second. And we're going to transform it. So what's happening here when we translate is this is a zero, zero here. If I want to draw a point here, if I actually set the origin of the canvas to here and then draw the line at zero, zero, then it's going to do it there. If I have a point here, I set the canvas to be zero, zero. And if there's a point here, and if our line is 0 0.2 long, if I start at minus 0 0.1 and I go all the way to 0 0.1, then I'll have a line that is 0 0.2 long, and it's happening on the origin. So I'll show you that now. It's a little bit tricky to understand, but we'll get there. Draw the line. So I'm going to begin the path. Move, so that's wrong. So minus line size. 
multiply it by the width, divide by two for the first half, then we'll go positive the other side, and we'll just stroke it. Uh, we'll restore the canvas, that's a good idea. Uh, we're gonna move the line down, sure. Um, if it's not finished, so it's inferred, we want it to be below 1.2 for it to be finished. If any of the lines aren't below that, we haven't finished. And then if we're not finished, we call the animation function again. So if not finished, we'll do that. And then I'm getting an error from here because it's set as a constant and we need to be able to change it. Right, let's refresh the page and we should have a bunch of lines starting at the top and then going down the page. Now, obviously they're not rotating. So let's go back and add in an angle. So here we're gonna start with an angle zero angle zero, but we're gonna turn, gonna set a turn to be a random value. So let's do two, and it's sensibly suggesting minus one. So if we go from minus one, it'll be turning one way. If we go all the way to one, it'll be rotating the other way. So let's do that and add the rotation back in. Uh, so here we are, just under the translation, we'll do the rotation as well. And I happen to know we need to convert from degrees to radians. So that's the line angle. So now here, if it's 45 degrees, our line will now draw here, or if it's like this. So we're moving the canvas and rotating it so we can use exactly the same code to draw the lines. Um, we rotated it. Now we need to update the turning thing. Rotate, uh, no, we've done that. Yes, rotate the line. There we go. So rotate the line. So now this lot should be falling from the top and rotating at the same time which is great. Now I also want it to go back to the top again. So let's do that here. If we haven't finished, if we have finished, if we have finished in two seconds, reset all the Y positions and start again. So set time out. If finished, let, let's start here with the if finished. If finished, set time out loop them all, set them all back to the beginning, animate the frame. Right, okay, we're good. So that should start it again. However, these colors are a little bit ugly. So we're going to go to the project I just finished called Vents, and we're gonna steal the palette from there. Let's go grab the palette and copy it over. So now I need to make sure that that's loaded in. So if I go grab this, do this, palettes, and then at the top here, so the linter doesn't complain at me, I'm gonna say that this is the thing we have access to. So pick a, a random palette. So features is gonna pick one of the random palettes. And now I need to replace this color thing here and I'll explain this in, maybe in just a second. I happen to know that the colors live in an array called colors inside the palette. So I need to do that first and then grab the value. Okay, and if we refresh that, we should see it in some nice colors here. So if I look at the palettes, you can see it's got a palette name, and then there's the array of colors and all of the names. So if I refresh them, we should see more. If I go back to this page here, it should start loading up in here. That's quite a nice color, we'll use that. So this project, under 10 minutes, I think, the really useful thing is the transform, scale, and rotate of the canvas. It can be sometimes tricky to get your head around, but once you get the hang of, instead of moving things around on the canvas to draw, you just keep moving the canvas origin and then putting things at zero, zero. It's a really useful tool. Oh, let's look at this game. So I really like the way it has a static image and then it gets refreshed with this dynamic motion. So you kind of got animation and static at the same time. Anyway, so this will live on my website. Uh, there'll be a genuine link and you can see the code. It's got links to the code under here, which we literally just written, not that one. Yeah, I'll fix that. And I think, I think that's it. We actually nailed it. We did a generative art project in 10 minutes, explained it. It's all good. Excellent. Um, I was finishing sooner than I expected. <laughs> If you want more of this type of stuff, subscribe, all that good things. Thank you for joining along. It's really good we hit 10 minutes. Let's see how the rest of the month goes. Follow the January hashtag on Twitter, I guess. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.